All right, folks, the time has come. We really need to see what's under this cover. Some of y'all may think it's something that it's not, but probably most of you know what it is. Um, we're going to start by talking about what it isn't. It's not a Camaro. Spoiler. <laughs> now, this car I purchased uh, approximately 20 plus years ago. Did a whole bunch of work to it. I drove it back from Mobile, Alabama. Um, it was a long journey that was not without its perils. Um, when I got back for, uh, to Texas from Mobile, Alabama, the tires were down to their cords. Um, they were good when I left Mobile. It turns out this car had extreme frame damage underneath it uh, and essentially it, it, it did not have an alignment. Um, I took it to an alignment after I purchased the vehicle and it drove worse than it did before the alignment. There was obviously some trickery involved there to make the car sort of drive straight. Not really sure. Long story short is that the front frame rails had buckled from rust on the top and the entire passenger side of the car at one point had either come into contact with a guardrail at a high rate of speed or gotten T-bone. I don't know. It was bad. Um, fast forward a little bit, like dang it, bought this crappy car. <sighs> what are we going to do with it? Uh, at the time, there was a really good junkyard um, that did nothing but Mopars here in the area uh, called Dr. Mopars. Um, and he had a very good selection of random any Dodge you could possibly think of uh, for parts. I went out there with the old top pan and uh, with my dad, Larry the engineer, and we found a donor for a front frame section. It was from a, I believe, a 75-ish um, Plymouth Valiant, I think. Um, took our little portable torch set out and took a strap over the top of that car and used the top pan to roll the car over uh, on its lid and torched the whole front subframe out. Um, lots of grinding and stuff later to you know, take the metal that we didn't need off of it and get it down to just where the tack weld or the, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, spot welds were and cut the front rotten section off of this car. Um, it was a long time ago, but we did manage to get it on there straight. Um, long story short. And it went to an alignment and it got aligned. And that didn't really, that doesn't cover the, 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 side, the fact that the passenger side of the car got smacked, nor the fact that the, you know, uh, quarter panels were completely rotten out on the bottom side and had about that much Bondo, yes, that much Bondo on the sides of the quarter panels when we bought this car. It was uh, in bad shape, long story. Um, so we put the Magnum 380 crate motor from the top hand in it. Took it to one car show with a very sketchily welded together drive shaft to make all of that work. Drove it around town a couple of times, I think. Parked it. You know, life got in the way. Went to school, got a job, moved away from home, etc., etc. The car just sat. Moved the car out here, put it under this cover, under this lean to, and haven't touched it since the starter died. Five, six, eight years ago, I don't know. It was a long time ago. Starter died, it melted a fusible link, I'm pretty sure. There was smoke. I closed the hood and I forgot about it until now. So, today we're going to actually uncover this thing. Um, we'll pop the hood, see if the 20 year old brand new tires will hold air still. Um, get it on the rack. Get a starter out of it, put a starter in it. Not really looking forward to it. Uh, apparently, there's people out there who think I uh, really should do this. And I'm going to just go ahead and do it. 
so we don't lose interest <laughs> and I need to do it anyway this poor engine probably has about 15,000 miles on it and I'm ashamed to say that you know it's probably seen better days I'm pretty sure it still turns over we're gonna find all that out today um, we're gonna get air and tires we're gonna drag it on out of here onto a rack pull the plugs loop the cylinders turn the motor over a little bit um, evaluate what the hell I did 20 years ago to make this car run and let's hope that you know it turns out good so let's see what it looks like under this uh, very terrible excuse for a car cover and it, it's not a Camaro I promise you start by removing the Camaro bullshit. All right, folks, you guessed it. 68 Camaro. No, Barracuda. And it's a notchback model even. I think there's some guys up in Canada that have one of these. They, they think it's a big deal. I, I don't know. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see if the tires take some air. Oh, we'll do a little walk around here. All right, folks, here we are. First time it's had the cover off of it in quite some time. Today we're gonna try and resurrect the old girl. We did it. We got the Barracuda resurrected. I'm not going to show you what happened there because you need to go watch Duddy's video. He does a way better job with that. Uh, and I frankly don't have the time to videotape everything that we did to this car. Um, he does a great job of it. Shout out to Duddy's Adventure. Go check him out. Today we're going to go through the finer details of how I built this car 20 years ago. Some of it's good, some of it's ugly. We learned a lot over the last week. Um, we learned that 
you really shouldn't let a car sit for 20 years, um, especially if it wasn't done before you let it sit. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and put it up on the rack. We're going to just show, you know, how much I really did do on this car 20 years ago. And thankfully, it all actually held up pretty well. So here we go. switch cameras now and put a little lighting under this sucker and go through what all happened. Okay man, here's the thing. All this structure you see here, frame rail, K member, all this stuff, not original to the car, not in the least. Um, luckily, we managed to get it together straight. Um, you can really kind of get an idea of some of the poor fabrication that didn't happen and that you know, floor pans were never tied into the subframe. Uh, there's some slightly questionable welding holding some stuff together that probably should be cleaned up. Um, at the time I was a little more interested in making it go fast, loud, sound awesome. I fabricated a pretty awesome dual three inch uh, exhaust system for it, I think, for, you know, 19, 20 year old Noah that really didn't know much. We got cutouts, we got turbo mufflers. Yeah. Again, Kind of questionable gaps here and there, a lot of clamps that probably need to be deleted for weld. But it held together. It's been a functional skid plate at one point in its life. Same with the headers. Got a little, a little smashed. There we go, right there. I was attempting to possibly do like a road race type build for this car back in the day. I was trying to get it as low as possible. That really didn't work out well. Um, as you all have seen, the current stance is a little bit more moderate as far as they go. The entire front end under this car is fresh. Bushings, ball joints, tie rods whole shebang. I even put brand new tires on it. Yeah, 15 miles worth of tread wear on those guys. And um, we'll come over here to this side. This is where you can really start to see some of the differences. That entire quarter or the rocker panel there was completely cut out and replaced. At the time, there was not a dedicated Barracuda rocker panel to buy. You could get them for a dart or a duster. That's what we did. You kind of see it, it, we made it work, but you scooch over here to this other side. If you look at a Barracuda rocker panel, it's not straight like that. It's got a nice curve to it, holds the body lines. So, you know, just pretend like that didn't happen. It's it's solid. We know that. Um, let's check out some of the uh, tire wear that occurred last week. This tire also was brand new. We cut it off short so that I could at least move it around. She's, they've got another burnout in them. Don't worry. We'll, we'll be taking care of that. Also last week, as you saw in the video that Duddy made, Fuel tank was completely trashed. Um, luckily I had one in stock for 76 Dart. And uh, we made it work, at least temporarily. The axle under this car is an eight and a quarter. 
uh, I believe we harvest it from the same vehicle that gave up its subframe for the front. Eight and a quarter had it rebuilt with a fresh set of 323 gears and a uh, track lock. Um, we have super stock springs in the back here with, uh, you know, good brand new 20 year old KYB shocks. I wasn't really stoked on how the ride height was. And what I did here was I actually cut down some leaves and uh, bolted them into the pack to make the car sit level with super stock springs. Not ideal, probably, but it made it sit the way I wanted it to. Uh, looks like we've got oh, five, five springs stacked there all bolted to the pack. And it, it works. Not ideal. We have, again, some nice, nice rubbers on this with some rallies. I do have center caps for this car. Um, the wheels need a little bit of restoration after sitting, but they're, they're pretty good. I think we can throw a set of tires on it and call it a day. I've got a lot of parts to this car, a lot of trim. Um, that may or may not end up on this car. It's, it's, it may be too nice for this car. I don't know. We'll find out. But for now, the main problems we ran into, amongst others, uh, was A, fitting the mini starter. Came right out after some finagling. And you'll see we have the traces of a coolant leak still. If you watch Duddy's video, You'll seen that we had one freeze plug that just a little bit of poking at re removed all the lifeblood from the block, put a plug in it, and we're still leaking. I believe it's probably the plug that's uh, between the engine and the transmission causing that trouble. This engine will have to come out um, for various reasons, one of which is to replace freeze plugs, other of which is the block is completely full of rusty sludge, and you know, we've got to weld up these floor pans that are being held together by vice grips over here and nothing over here. <laughs> um, as we know, a, a body or any Mopar of this era is a unibody car. And your floor pan is structural. And, well, the engine needs to come out to finish up this welding, plain and simple. Uh, there's just too much in the way to really get a good job done on it. And, you know, we'll have to kind of start over in a way. But there you go, underneath side of the car. I think that covers most of the bases on what all happened here. We'll move um, under the hood a little bit in the interior. And we're going to cut straight to burnouts after that. Because, you know, we don't have time to show fixing this. It, it's really just more of a, um, what do you call it, a uh, exercise and don't do what I do. Fix your cars. Don't let them sit for 20 years and forget about them. You just end up needing to do more work. All right, so we're going to do a quick little run around on the body work here. This car was in very bad shape, as I mentioned in the intro. Um, the front lower fenders have been repaired. They were in rough, rough shape. Had to put no patch panels there. The doors, actually, I do not believe are the original doors that came with this car. They were in very bad shape also, especially the passenger side. Um, so they've been roughly fitted quarter panels, completely replaced. Full quarters on this car. A lot of welding in that job. Maybe not how the professionals would do it, but hey, they're on there. Back, we have pretty solid trunk lid and exhaust pipes and all that good stuff. Showing some signs of age. You can see the stance on this car is kind of interesting. Super stock springs in the back. Um, and we did put Mopar Heavy Duty uh, torsion bars up front. They're all new. The front spring hanger was flipped 
um, to gain the rear ride height level we wanted. Probably not ideal. That is probably going to have to be addressed during the eight and three quarter swap uh, to get the pinion angle actually correct. Um, I actually had this car even lower than this um, by actually reversing the rear shackles even. And the front torsion bars cranked basically as low as they would go. And that resulted in, well, turning the exhaust system into a skid plate. Not drivable, really, except possibly on a very smooth racetrack. Uh, and luckily, the car was undercover for a long time. And uh, aside from some stuff here that I'm just not going to talk about why the new quarter panel has a big gouge in it, uh, it's pretty solid. And is it's ready for you know drag race stuff race car stuff right i think so as far as interior goes it's pretty spartan um, again it just never got finished this that's not hooked up oh, just have to come on in here yep just like that Oh, yeah. Needs a little work on the body lines. We uh, scored a set of these bucket seats from, I believe, was a 68 or 71, maybe, Dart GT. That was at the same yard, Dr. Mopar, that harvested a lot of bits and pieces to get this car back to the state that it's in. You can see previous Dodge owner wiring. Uh, floor pans that, well, you know, you can see the transmission. Uh, I do have intentions of possibly four-speeding swapping this car at some point. That's why I have a four-speed hump in it. Uh, at the time, I was still collecting parts for that. And I went ahead and just used a 727 that was pretty fresh. Uh, it was actually from the top hand also. Had it converted to two-wheel drive. Um and use that transmission in this car because, again, 10 or 15,000 miles on the whole package. Um, got your, make it not wiggle here. We got our Barracuda gauges, factory tack. Do need to find a 150 mile an hour speedometer maybe? I might even have one, I don't know. There's so many parts I have for this car, it's hard to keep track of and Well, I haven't seen them in 15 or 20 years, so they're somewhere. We do have dash pads for it. Got a real nice Grant wood steering wheel, which is really a slick wheel. I have the horn cap for it somewhere. Uh, we did correct the door closure issue with ratchet strap for burnout usage. And in the back, oh, rear seat is halfway still here. I do have the back for it in storage somewhere. And a bunch of crap. Oh, over there, let's, let's walk around and we'll look at some of the uh, goodies here. I do have a full set of torque boxes for this car, as well as subframe connectors that need to be welded in. And uh, that is all going to be part of fixing all this unwelded floor pan. Amazingly, guys, this car still has brakes after 20 years. Not sure how, but they still work. You also see that this car is the Betty Cuda. That key tag came with this car from the previous owner, and it's only fitting, you know, that that was her name. You can even see the car show ribbon from 20 years ago. Fourth annual hot rod. I think it was, what was it? Hot rod show at Judd's Oil Well, Wimberley, Texas. So, let's look at the trunk. Believe it or not, folks, this car came with two keys. Wouldn't you know it? Huh. A Mopar that doesn't use a screwdriver to open the trunk. Who would have thought? Rare bird indeed. Uh, 
Well, lots of parts that have been forgotten I even had. I believe we have a carpet set in that box. We've got some wing windows, we've got some weather strip, lots of trim. Oh, there's the other headlight bucket. Looking for that. Oh, this is some good stuff here. We have some rear armrests that very, very vintage eBay box. Um, well, some more miscellaneous things. Up oh, there's the other side door handle. I bet there's a door latch in there even for it. Need to yeah, look at that. So, we did have to put a fuel tank in this car, as you saw in Duddy's video. We did it pretty hastily. I did get the filler neck back in it. However, uh, it just, we tried as good as we could. We were in a time crunch, and it needs some clearancing to get that tube uh, centered up in the hole. We didn't really put that all back together. Now, well, some of the things I'm not proud of are cutting holes on both sides to flip the spring hangers up into the trunk. Yeah. Lowered Barracuda, yeah, it can be done. Not recommended. I gotta fix that too. I'll add it to the welding list. But, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty sanitary. We actually did a lot of work um, kind of prepping this car for paint back in the day. Bottom of the trunk pan is all solid we've uh did a lot of a lot of work on this the rust repair that we also did included uh rebuilding this whole rail very tediously um you know new window gasket actually if you look close enough it's actually got finished paint there uh, so it was Ready for its paint job. Maybe one day we'll be black. Not primer anymore. Y'all well, tell me what you think. I, I think 68 Barracuda in black is about the coolest thing. Well, especially a notchback. Alright, let's talk about what's under this hood. It's kind of a special motor. Uh, they only produced them for a few years. It was a crate motor built by Mopar. This is a Magnum 380 crate motor. Camshaft specs are a 501 intake, 513 exhaust lift. I believe it's around 230 degree duration, 108 degree lobe separation, give or take. Really gives it a nice, really aggressive idle. Probably about as big as you'd want for a 360, honestly, without some more cylinder head. It's got a 770 uh, Street Avenger carburetor and an MSD ignition system. We swapped out the fairly crappy looking auto light plugs that have been in there for 20 years for a nice set of NGK V powers. They'll probably need to be changed out again for future racing use. Uh, you know, they they burned a lot of oil off of this thing whenever we first got it running. I probably put about a good quarter quart of 5W30 mixture of that and some PB blaster down all the cylinders. and It was quite a mess. And it did take some period of time to burn all that out. And uh, so being fed uh, incorrectly uh, is a Holly Blue pump. It was, again, 20 years old, mm, made terrible noises mm, upon first startup. Finally got it to pick up some fuel, and it quieted down. Makes good pressure, good volume. Unfortunately, our fuel pressure regulator decided to last just long enough for burnout purposes. It is leaking profusely uh, from you know, all of the ceiling surfaces, etc., that but whatever, we, we won't talk about that right now. It's going to be fixed. It's got to be moved. Um, 
Other than that, it's a pretty basic A-body setup. Manual brakes, um, front discs, 727 transmission, headers that I, I'm pretty sure I will just go ahead and keep. We get a starter in and out of it now, and they're not, not rotten. They don't have holes in them. Uh, so, you know, if they survive the engine removal, then uh, they'll go back on. 380 horsepower, 410 foot-pounds of torque. It's uh, enough to really make this car buggy. We took this motor out of the 1979 Dodge Top Hand Power Wagon. It's my uh, off-road truck. You can catch a walk-around video of that on my channel here. And it survived 10,000 miles of beating on it in that truck, which was great fun. It at the time was running just 31 by 1050 tires and that truck with this engine was able to pull down a 14 9 quarter mile at 89 miles an hour and the fuel pump I was using on that truck at the time was the limiting factor for that it probably would have been closer to a 14 5 or less it just the pump couldn't keep up I fully expect that this engine in this car can easily put it into the 12s maybe will work good track good temps you know I don't know easy 13s no doubt the serpentine belt system on this is very custom if you've ever worked on late model Magnum pickups you'll recognize some of it the main difference is that we don't have a power steering pump and that that tensioner pulley assembly is on the wrong side it would be right there on a truck we kind of cut it down melded it back together made it work with a magnum pump that is bolted to an LA timing cover that's one nice thing about these 380 crate motors as you can see down there we have a fuel pump block off plate they actually put a fuel pump eccentric on the camshaft in these engines and use an LA timing cover we found that our bracket system from the old truck, uh, an old Mopar you know, B-Groove belt system, never could get anything to line up. It would throw belts off at 4,500 RPMs every single time you raced it. And uh, so that was this. To make this work, I had a custom uh, adapter plate. Kind of see that between the water pump and the timing cover to space the pump out correctly and you know, cut that bracket up, bolts right onto the magnum head, uh, did some trickery there, custom length belt that now I surely will never be able to find the right length again without going to the parts house and you know going through the stack see what is the right length. Again, this motor does have to come out. It is full of rust. The freeze plugs are gone. I thought they were brass freeze plugs. They are actually just brass anodized plugs. So there's that. And the motor needs to come out. All the plugs need to come out. And the block has to be flushed. Um, and, well, we saw the uh, nice welding work that needs to happen. And having the engine out of the way here would make life much, much easier. Well, that's pretty much it. Electric fan setup. Um, this radiator is actually out of the 79W150. Uh, it got transferred over during the swap. It does a okay job of keeping it cool, although I don't really know. Only never put maybe 15, 20 miles on it, if that. One car show, a couple burnouts. Um, yeah. We might need to clean that out. It's a job for future Noah. Hopefully not in 20 years. All right, y'all. I think that pretty much does it on the walk around on how we put this car together, why it sat, all its problems, the huge amount of work that is still to be done. I'd like to give huge thanks to my buddy, Duddy Adventures. Eric, you did a great job putting this video together. I couldn't have done it. You, you captured what it's like to have a car that you've literally been the thorn in your side 
for 20 years and what not to do. You know, regrets. Um, another huge thanks. Bad Tree Productions. Y'all's clip in the middle of this was absolutely hilarious. The fact that you spun Back to the Future into transporting a starter from Canada over there. Canada? Yeah, Canada. Iowa. Whatever. To Texas. Through a mini fridge. Powered by beer. Freaking brilliant. Um, we need Mr. Fusion stickers, I think. Yep. So this is going to be a thing. We're going to... You need parts? I need parts? Hell! Five seconds away and a 12-ouncer. You know, let's do it. Um, so huge thanks to y'all. It was absolutely hilarious. Uh, I needed a starter. Y'all came through in a pinch. Couldn't have done it better myself. So, just to show y'all, we didn't blow it up doing the burnout. We're going to do a cold start here. Thanks to y'all in Iowa. You guys sent us down this weather. It's like at least 35 degrees today. It's miserable. It's sunny, but miserable. Um, so we'll do a cold start and we'll go right into burnout montage, which y'all saw only a little bit of. It was quite the task to get this sucker to do a burnout and well, we did great. Thanks to Eric at Duddy's Adventure, Blake and Jeremy at Bad Tree Productions. Y'all couldn't have done, I couldn't have done this without y'all's help. Thank you. What I call horsepower. How you want to do this? Are you going to do a little test bump just to see if it goes? I guess so. And then if it goes, you're just going to go with it? Obviously, that thing just has to be on all the time. Now, at this point, the fact that this car is running, just disregard the fact that the, the I mean, you should just plug it in and let that sump it eat. I've got secret sauce over there. Do you want to use it or not? Uh, let's just try with that Gets extra smokiness. Ah, oh, but like, that's what you do. You got like 20 gallons of water over here. Oh yeah. I have to cheat clapped out Cummins. It ain't got the armadillos like this one. Have we thought about what it's going to do to the side of the building? Hey, Larry, stop being a pes pessimist. Fine. We worry about that later. <laughs> well, why didn't we wash the gauges off? I want this thing completely unraveled. Just in case something does go wrong, we're not unraveling it while it's burning. Okay, our hose is ready.
back tires are there. That's good. Yeah. All right. Put on the right. 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 Oh yeah, you don't want to see that on camera. <laughs> Good thing is this is clean your tires. Happy New Year.
think, Magnum. Are you upset that we stole your kitty cave? Where all the mousies hang out at? Hmm? Hell of a burnout car, huh? We stole your mouse house. What are you gonna do?